NATO members were unable to reach consensus today on how to proceed with military action in Libya. France and Britain have taken lead roles, and they want other allies to contribute more. So for now, the situation on the ground is a stalemate, with rebels in the east desperate for help from supporters in the west. Our Neil MacDonald reports from Benghazi. When you suddenly have freedom of assembly, you exercise it. Gathering to make a political statement is still a novelty here, but one undertaken with considerable relish. These people also hope to set an example. The breakthrough must be through uprising. Uprising is the key. These people came to Benghazi from all over the eastern part of the country, from cities like Shahat, al Beda, and Tobruk. Their fondest dream being that Tripoli and Misrata will soon join them in free Libya. The chants praise God and exhort other cities to stand up to the dictator. But then, of course, it's one thing to say that from a protected city like Benghazi and quite another for cities still under Muammar Gaddafi's boot. We need uh, that uh, people in Tripoli to join this uh, uprising. Uh, additionally, we could not... Uh, that could get them killed in many great well, numbers. Uh, well, uh, it's not, uh, I don't want to uh, speak about that, but he is holding the city as a hostage, isn't he? Not much is known about what's happening in Tripoli. Images from there are stage managed by the regime and Western reporters there are effectively prisoners. Misrata is another story. It's under siege. Gaddafi's enforcers are killing more civilians daily. Hospitals are coping with the result. NATO's mission may be a humanitarian one to protect civilians, but the people of Misrata aren't feeling very protected. Someone has to help. This is, this is not, not humanitarian at all, what's happening here. NATO, meanwhile, has decided not to step up its campaign, for now. Western Libya's rebels aren't entirely on their own, but this war is still theirs. Neil MacDonald, CBC News, Benghazi, Libya.